Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is part 11 of .NET full stack series. If you are watching this video for the first time, then I will highly recommend you guys to go back and watch all my videos till part 10 and then you can continue with this video. So if you saw in the previous video, I have talked about how we can create our first API endpoint and this is what we have created the register and I'll also talked about how we can make use of the application layer we saw the interface creation in the application layer, the service and also we saw about how do we create the service collection so that we can do the dependency injection for our application layer. Okay. Also we saw in the domain like how we have created our first interface for user repository. Like if I have to add some extra signatures inside my repositories then I can do that because just by using generic repository it is not sufficient because this five method cannot help me to cover up my all use case scenario while developing my application okay so this is what we have covered in the last video so in this video I'm going to talk more about the validation things okay if you take a look at my application right if I go in the application in the services I have this authentication service and what I'm doing right, I have already added a user whose name was this like why should she maybe this email ID. Okay, so what we will do right, we'll try to add this email again and we'll see that if this block runs or not. So if I'm using the same email ID, then this should throw this exception, which is you user email already exist or something like that. If I go back here and if I click on execute, okay, can you see I'm getting an exception which says that user already exist. Okay. But do you think this is a good way to do things? The answer is no, right? We should not throw exception for this because we already know that this is something related to the validation. So we know this can happen. So if we know something can happen, then we should not throw exception. Rather what we can do, right? We can wrap our error messages or the success, whatever we have inside a object. Okay. So I will be trying to showcase you about how we can create a result pattern inside our clean architecture. Okay. And what does this result pattern will do? It is nothing but a C sharp class, which will help us to wrap our messages and any data inside an object. And if there is any success or any error, so this object, which will be returned to our controller and our controller will handle that uh, by creating some extension method. And like, if it is a success, then it will give us a result of okay. And if there is any failure, then what it will do, it will convert that into an error message and that error message, it will return back to the user. Okay. So this is what the agenda of this today's video. If you're excited, then let's get started. All right. So to create this result pattern, what I will be doing, right? I'll go in my application layer and inside this common, I will have a results folder. And inside that I have created my first class, which is result.cs file. And this is what it looks like. All right. So now inside this, I will be creating few properties. For example, I have a prop of type Boolean and the property name is is success. Okay. And uh, I have one more property, which is again of type Boolean and this will be re reverse of that, which is is failure. It will check for the failure result. Okay. Failure. Okay. And again, this is a Boolean, but what I can do, right? Uh, this thing, it can take it directly from is success. So I can just say that is success is just false. if it is true, then the failure is false and stuff like that. And I can remove this set from here. We can only do get from this particular class. All right. And now the third thing, what I'll have to create, right? I'll have to create one more, which is going to hold my errors. Okay. So this property is error, but what we can do, right? We can wrap this inside a class. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a one more class just below it. So let me create that class. So this will be a sealed class. So let me, let me just do that here. So this is my sealed. So I just created a record of error and which takes a string of code and string message. Okay. And what I did, right. I just created one instance of it, which is the error with none. Okay. If there is no error, then I've created the instance of that error by saying that error code is none and the message is empty. Okay. So that's what I have created here. And now what I can do, right? I can replace this string type with this record, which is the error and this error, nothing but what it will return whenever I am like sending the record, it will return me an object of an error with a error code and a message. Okay. So that's what it was. And now I will have to make sure that I'll check that if everything is correct or not. So I will be creating a constructor. Okay. So let me create a protected constructor of result. 
all right and now inside that i have this check over here so if you see this check right so what this does i'll just have to do this check if my success is true and there is no error so this is invalid correct so that's what i did a check over here so what i can do right i that's why i don't like ai this can, could have been done in a single or condition so let me put up a or condition here and you can check that directly and then you can throw a invalid operation message from here and you can say that invalid operation that's it all right so that's what it looks like and now just below that let me also initialize the is success value with this and the error with this okay this should be caps is success okay and that's about it and that's what you have did now now what i need to do right so this will help me to get my job done but now i will have to create some static methods which will help me to create the instance of this result okay so let me create few static method which is public static result of success okay so what this static method is doing this success method it will create a new instance of my result and if for success this will is success will become true and for the error, I'm saying error dot none. So it will create a none, which means it will create this particular object for me. All right. And now just below that, I have to do something similar for the failure. So this is what I have. So we have to pass in the error object first, and then this will return the instance of this result. All right. Now this is what it looks like. Now this is not just done. I will also have to create uh, some a generic type of result which can help me to send some data all right so to do that right i have already created a t result class of this and inside this right what i am doing right i'm creating this new class result which is having a generic constant which was which is of t value and this is inheriting from this result okay so inside that i have this read only property of this t value and what i am doing right i have this constructor created where i am trying to assign this t value here and then i am passing the another which is is success and error and as i am inheriting this okay so i'll have to pass it to the base because the base constructor has these two requirement if i show you here right we have created the constructor here so this two is required here so that's why i have to pass it to the base okay so this is what all about object oriented programming things all right and now what i'm doing inside the constructor i'm assigning the value to this guy and that's about it and just have one more constraint below here that if it is success right then return the value or else you have to throw an invalid operation that no value for a failure result because is success is false right which means it's a failure and for a failure result we cannot have a value that's what i have added in this particular class and now what i can do right now i can create some more static methods over here which will also return some value okay so for example here i can create a public static result of t value where i which is success and this can have this value which kind of value you are expecting okay so that you can put it over here and what i can do right while returning this now instance of this result i can return a value with the success response which was true and error as done let me do some refactoring and put this inside to its own file so let me cut this and let's go here and create one more error.cs so this should be a class so i haven't selected class let's select a class and give the name error.cs and i can replace it with this one okay let's see if the changes and if you go here there is no error anymore so that's what this result thing was and now let's see like how we can make use of this result inside our project okay so if you note that here right um i think i was using somewhere the the magic the string magic somewhere over here i don't know maybe what i'll do right this error whatever we have created uh, rather than this none right we can create our own constants so let me show you that how we can do so over here create one more shisha file then this is my error type constant all right and now inside this i can create all of my error whatever i will require for this project okay so for example i have the first one so let me go ahead and create that public con string suppose i have a user not found okay this is good but i don't want to do with that I, this is quite generic and this is quite related to the user okay so let me first create for the none and this is public const of type string and this is none okay and this is how i can initialize so what i will have right i will have the other as invalid so i'll say prop no probably doesn't work here so public con string okay i'll just change this to validation error okay and this will change again to validation error okay 
uh, you can have a validation error you can have unauthorized so you can say unauthorized okay so this will again change to unauthorized okay uh, something similar we can do so you got not found yeah which is for 404 error then you must have internal server error so this is also good okay so this is what the bare minimum i should have it okay bad request i don't require because i'm already doing it for validation error which means it's a bad request okay so let me but have it and change it to uh, forbidden okay maybe we can use this right for a 403 kind of error we can say forbidden and this will again change to forbidden okay forbidden error all right not found error let me also add the suffix it depends man if you need because i see all of them has it so let me also add for the others as well so this is what it is for me and now what i will be doing right this error type constant can be used over here because in future i will be using this error type constant lot of places so that's why i added that so error type constant dot none okay that's what i have to add for this okay so now i can say that my bare minimum code is done for using the result pattern and now i'll tell you that how this result pattern can be used okay so inside the application layer if you remember in the authentication service we were throwing some exceptions right so now we will not be throwing exception what we will do we will return result instead okay so now you can say this will return a result of and the same thing you have to update it inside your interface as well so let's go here in the interface and in the authentication service rather than sending string we will send a result for register and login okay save the changes and now this will break for sure because you cannot send a string now you have to return something which is a result okay but i'll start changing it from here so for example if your request is null so what you can do right you can just go here and say return result okay so result dot you can you see you are able to access failure now so you can say result dot failure and you can just give here that okay register email is null but this is not it is required this guy requires your error object okay so what you can do right now you can start documenting your error here so now if you remember we have this error folder created what you can do right you can click here and currently you can create this class file you want to create a auth error right authentication error so you can say auth error so what i always prefer right first i give the name of the service for which i am creating the error and then give this error name okay so let's open up this file here auth error and this class will nothing but be a static class okay and in the static class we will try to create those static methods okay static public static and then you have to create instance of an error and this error was for invalid invalid uh, user input or i can say register request correct and you can return a new instance of this error by saying error type constant dot validation error and this is what the message you will give okay remember we have this error okay this is nothing but i know some of you can get confused this is something like this new error what you create right and you pass in your uh, code error code which is validation error and you pass in your message what you want to show to the user which is invalid register request okay and let's save the changes and now what you can do right you can go here rather than sending this like that what you can say you can directly say your auth error dot register invalid register request okay and save the changes all right and now again you have to do something similar for user already exists so i can just copy this because i will be using it so again i can go in auth error all right and just below this line i will create one more which is public static error okay and i'll change it to user already exist okay and this will change to okay what kind of validation error it is again this is a validation error so i'll keep that and i will replace this string with user already exist okay and you can save the changes and you don't need this because you are using latest .NET 8 so save all the changes let's go here and no need to throw an exception you can directly return result so return result dot failure auth error dot user already exist error all right and now if everything is okay so what you will return you will return a success so you will say return result dot success and if you want to pass your message you can also pass that user registered successfully and just save the changes all right and now what you can do here right so if you go back here inside your 
API inside this auth controller. Now you will have a response. And now what you can do, right? Now you will not set always uh, return okay. So what you have to do, you will check if if your response dot is failure. So can you see you have access to is failure and is success. So if it is failure, right? So what you can return, you can return a bad request. Okay, you can return a bad request of this particular error. All right. Or else if your success, right? If it is a success response, then you have to send okay, return result dot okay. Okay, and you can just say response. Okay, you can send the response directly. And let's save the changes and let's see what happens now. If you send the response that this is nothing but a result object, let's see what you get. So save the changes. Okay, I see some error here. Let me go and fix it. Okay, I authentication service has an issue. Maybe we are not implementing the T result. Yes, because we changed the the chain, uh, we have changed the return type of this from string to result. So let me change it here as well and save the changes. All right. Now what I'll do, I'll always stop the application, go in the terminal and close this and let me do dot net build. I'm assuming everything should be green. Let's see. All right. Yes. Uh, everything is success. Build is success. Now let's go and run your application. And now what I'll do, I'll try to register a new user. I will say this as user at the rate gmail.com. I don't know man, why I make this mistake, but yeah, gmail.com and then password I'll keep as string and this is just a user. Okay. And if I click on execute, so can you see I'm able to get a good response from the user, which is this like value was user registered successful because I passed in a value then is success is true and in the error object this is what I was talking about I get a code as none and message is empty okay so this is what I was talking about as a response body what you will get if it is a success okay now let's try to again uh, hit the same request because this user is already exist and let's see what you get now so if I see if I try to hit again right what I got I really got an error message which says that code which is validation error and I get a message as user already exist. Okay. If you want to pass something similar, what you got for that response, right? So what you can do, right? Rather than sending, okay, let's go back to your auth controller rather than sending this error, right? What you can do, you can directly send the response as well to the user so that it will always be same for all the, so the result object will always be same. Even if it is error or failure, you will have something similar body in your response, even if it is success or a failure. So let me just go ahead and restart the application. All right. So now here, let's go ahead and try to test it again. And now if I click on execute, so now I'm expecting that it will have something like this. Can you see now it says is success is failure. Okay. Oh, sorry. Is success fail and is failure is true. And this is what my error message is. All right. So this is what I wanted to show you, right? How you can implement a result pattern. Okay. If you see, if I try to again, uh, just take a glance what we did. So let's go in the application layer. We created this common folder and in this result folder, we have these four files. And just by adding this four file, we have added a very good feature inside our application. Okay. So I hope this was quite clear to you guys, how you can implement a result pattern in your project, but this was not it. We will try to polish this more in the upcoming videos because what we will do, right? We will, my focus is on this authentication, wherever we will do the login and register, we will make sure that every piece is covered in these two APIs so that when we are creating the other APIs, we can reuse all our logics inside that. Okay. So I will be taking up this chance, this opportunity for these two APIs and I'll try to explain you what is result pattern, what is the fluent validation, how we can add it, what is logging, how we can make use of seri log and do structured login and whatnot. So once we have implemented all those things for these two APIs, then we will go ahead and create the rest of the APIs for blog, comment, role and whatnot. All right. So that's about it from this today's video. If you find this video helpful, then do share it with others. Now make sure to like, comment and also please, please, please support me because I'm trying my level best to explain you this complex topic by doing, by creating this small, small project. I hope this is helping you guys. Do let me know in the comment if there is any feedback related to my teaching. And again, if you're looking for the source code for this project, so you can find it over here on this link. So you can download it from here. All right. And talking about the next video, we will try to cover up more few important concepts as I have mentioned already. All right. So that's it guys. See you guys in the next video. Until then, keep practicing, keep coding and happy learning. Bye-bye.